All right. So let's check this out. I'm going to play this first. And there is another version without wings. I mean, with wings, which I'm going to take a look at, which I think is a bit more important because we need to know where those big shapes are. Uh, and it's important too for balance. Um, so you gave me some notes. You gave me someone else's notes to compare. Uh, and I have some agreements and, and some disagreements and there's, there's some 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 changes. Um, so let me just cut this out here. Because some of the balance things are also dependent on where the wings are to some degree. But watching this, I had, I had some similar thoughts. So... I'm going to go through their notes and then just add my two cents. That's probably the, the easiest. So one of the first things was that it looks like he is dodging the arrow. And I agree just because goes down, goes down. This happens at the same time. And looking at where that arrow lands, it seems like it should be going this way. But then it's going down and then it lands here. And the confusing thing too is that, is that a really tiny arrow that lands on his horn? Or is it behind him? So this is slightly weird. So he sobs and goes down. Yeah, this seems super, super strange. So I would, I would take this arrow out because that's already the aftermath. So I don't think you would need to see this arrow. Plus, it's just confusing. Um, so I would agree there. Another note was, feels like a strange way for a creature like this to cry. The way he or she's crying is very human. I'm going to go with the he just because of the uh, coloring, given that this is probably female, but you don't have to go with that trope. You can just add whatever colors. Um, so this could still be a she. Um, try to pull from other animals to see. So so saying that this is strange how they cry, this, that kind of depends on you. Like how human-like do you want this to be? Like that would be my... Like before you do anything... <clears throat> you have to decide, is this full-on creature behavior, despite the cartoony look, you know, you can't go full-on, 100% photoreal, but you can still go very, very human if that's something that you want to do. I don't think it's wrong. I think you, you empathize a bit more because you can relate. Um, so my thing would be, <clears throat> what I would do to get a bit of a mix, I'm a massive fan of having creatures and then doing a mix between animal behavior and human behavior. So what you could do here, and I think you're alluding to this in one of your notes at the end, I will bring these guys closer, and especially the child. So it's gonna be uh, probably more sorrow about the child than the wife or the husband. I'm just being cliche here. And imagine that there could be, the head would be here. You can always reverse it where the other person's uh, dragon's head is here. But the, the baby's head or the kid's head is here. And that the dragon goes down and then here's the the nuzzle whatever the nose right however animalistic you want to go here and the dragon pushes pushes the creature up a bit moving as if there he's not or she's not understanding what's going on they're not moving are they dead i don't understand i'm sad just kind of like it's a bit of a nudge like come on move move you can't be dead which is a bit more animalistic and the reason why i'm saying that one is there's something else later on but i'll get to that later here so i would Personally, I would have that more a bit more of a connection. It's a bit, to me, it would emphasize their emotion a bit more than just him looking at grass. You know what I mean? He doesn't even look really here. It's just kind of there. Um, so there would be a bigger connection. I would do that. So nix the arrow. I would personally do the nudging and not this. <clears throat> then this comes in. Um, and here I agree. Here the note was... Quite overacted, a giant dragon like this being poked by a toothpick of an arrow doesn't seem like it would elicit that big of a reaction. Yeah, so there are a couple things. Again, this all depends also how human you want to go. A, yes, this is tiny, this is way too big. Also, if you're going creature-y, like, creatures don't really bring out elbows. I mean, it's like it's you know a big cat thing as well, but uh, nothing when based is on a cat. But it's like I always kind of use the cat example. Elbows out is very human, and creatures keep um, elbows in. So <clears throat> you might have to bring one of the wings out there for a better silhouette if you want to go all the way. And if you go all the way, then I will bring the chest pointing this way and the uh, other arm here. So it's a bit more like that. So the elbows are further in. But again, such a big turn feels slightly unrealistic given that toothpick thing. So to me, it would just be hit, 
Um, and it will be kind of a couple steps back, head up, like what's going on? Quick look at the arrow and quick look left and right, like scanning. What's going on? What's going on? Something hit me. It's kind of painful, but not really. But what's going on here? So that will be my thing. I wouldn't go this big. Um, so you could take all this out. You can go from here or, you know, wherever the head is on the nudging to here. Freaked out eyes. I mean, not crazy freaked out, but just enough to go, whoa, what is this? Like he got, he got shocked out of the sorrow. And that's just kind of a, an involuntary move of, oh, something, something's there. And he goes, wait, oh, that's an arrow. That's what hurt me. And the thing is, the reason there's this note here. Um, oh, I'm hurting pain. Hold on. I'm going to this massive list of notes. This is completely unnecessary. He doesn't need to look back to understand what has already happened. So this is where I disagree. But it also depends on how <clears throat> animalistic you want to go. So if you have this here, an animal crying about or you know, being sad about their family dead, who's to know that this creature understands humans, knows humans, especially knows their weapons, and knows that this is an arrow and this is what killed him? Like, you know, like creatures wouldn't really know. Again, depends how far you want to go. So to me, I like this just because it would be, oh man, this is what hurts me. Wait. This looks exactly like this. This is painful. There are lots of them. This is what killed them. So to me, it's not an unnecessary thing to double down to show to the audience. To me, I like this because the dragon makes the connection of, wait, this is the thing that hurts. This is the thing that hurt them. At the same time, you know, if you want to, you can cut it and we just have to assume that the dragon understands. That's totally fine too. I'm not saying it's wrong. I just disagree that it's unnecessary. It just depends on the mindset and on the, the premise of the creature, their world and what they understand and how much they know of humans. That's, that was kind of, that was my thought on that. You know, and you can always do something where maybe there's some gnawing or some pulling out, like he, he bites down and tries to pull this out um, that maybe pulls this creature closer to, to him. Because he knows this killed them, and you want to take them out, so it, it's it would take the pain away. And because now they're the creature's closer because of the pulling, which could be nice little animation. Then he puts the nose down and does its last little nuzzling and snuggling of saying goodbye. Like that could be something. So we connect to this. The creature understands. Yeah, this is what will kill them. And I'm really sad. I'm doing my last touching because this is my family. So then you would tone this down, and then cut this out that would be i don't know so the couple ways of doing it i wouldn't it just all depends on your premise basically um and then there are some other points here put for balance and push more together there was something on uh i'm not gonna go on that frame quickly but there's some drawings about um the leg in so hold on let me just try to find this and the audience listening is going to be very confused but there is on 314 i will replicate this there's something of a slight disagreement. So there, this here, and then the front leg in here. It's a nice look. Um, my only thing is, again, it depends how human-like you're going to go. Um, so the thing is, when creatures walk slowly, their stance is wider because of balance. The faster they run, the closer they're together because of streamlining and less balance in it because of the velocity and momentum going forward. So walking slowly, going into like a catwalk, not like how a cat walks, a cat actually has the legs out. I'm saying like a supermodel catwalk. It's a wrong uh, use of, of uh, a term there. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's also appropriate. Like what I would actually like, how far are you going here? You take steps. See, there's that little pause. To me, it would be actually like this, head down, chest down, ass up. So it's actually bring out the legs for a triangle po a position and posing, which is much more, it's just stronger, it's more balanced. And to me, it's just, it's a pose of, I'm ready, I'm ready to pounce. I don't know quite, no, I don't know yet where that danger is coming from. So I'm not going into stalking mode because I don't know where, where that danger is. So that to me makes less sense. Again, it just all depends how creaturey you want to go. So to me, it would be, 
Gaining up here, I dis I agree, not disagree. I agree with the balance. I will bring out one leg just again for balance. Um, so that there was a drawing, I think around here, which that felt a bit off balance, especially with the tail here and this massing wing uh, out there. So I think that's why the wing here, having that wing there, is important. But then again, if if that character knows that the danger is off screen and starts to stalk that then it would start walking and then you can go into a bit more narrow because it gets a bit faster uh that's okay but to me at the very beginning because those are adjustment steps and to me they will be dependent on where that dragon is looking so it looks around like the big looks right and then okay like this I i'll be careful with this now looking this way feels like he or she knows where the danger is coming from and that's a bit premature because this is more like whoa i got shocked out of my star what's going on wait i'm seeing this what the hell and again i don't mind this because he will connect it or she um, but that's totally up to you then once you go into this i would start the looking so careful with this pause here this to this is too specific looking i would uh, like knowing where that character is or where the threat is I would immediately go into looks, hold, eye darts, eye darts, look around, eye darts, eye darts, and then, shoo, then locking it in. You know, and then the thing is here to me that, that now it feels rushed. Now they find them and he must be, or she must be so angry. Again, that depends on how creature you're going to go. Is this going to be a human thing of, oh, that's where they are, and then into a really angry face, and then go. So realizing, pause, change of emotion, attack. Or is it just going to be a quick of, here they are, I'm going to go, because it's very creaturey. So less human. So I would look out for that. Then as you go into this, this is yes. When you bring those in, that's good. And then it goes for the attack, that's fine. I would straighten out that, that part with the tail, but I know you're just still roughing this in. And I probably, as you go in, I would start folding in the wings just because of, again, streamlining it up being slowed down. Or, or you can always go this and go, Arr. so as, basically, as they look around, I would also bring in the wings because he wants to be small or she and look where is the attacker and not be seen and not, not display where, uh, where, you know, it doesn't want to, um, what's the word? not tra transmit display he doesn't want to you know present himself as a big target there's a threat and he's looking where is that threat so he or she's going to make itself as small as possible then again you can you can go in here of oh here it is and then you can do a big roar wings out going ah i've seen you and it's a very emotional reaction it's not a creature reaction it's an emotional reaction that's more human based where uh, here you are, wings out, I'm a threat to you, I'm, you know, making myself big and I'm attacking you. That could be something, right? So, I don't know. To me, lots of options. Um, so, yes and no on some of the notes. Again, all depends how far you want to go. I'm a big fan of mixing those things. So, I personally will go this. See, this is strong. I really like this pose. So... Legs out for balance. Then as you go in here and there's some more looking, and especially if you, if you want to keep a pause, I will bring out the legs because of the powerful stance of it. And then as the speed ramps up, then bring the legs in of what, that's what a creature would do. So these will be my, uh, my creature notes. Cool shot. Yeah, this seems weird, but I really like this. That, very cool. That's too big. This is nice though. I really like this. The timing of it and you understand that the creature is thinking and putting things together. And I like the timing and I like the lowering of the head, the head here. Oh, that's all cool. And again, I don't mind it. And again, it just connects of weight. This is the same and that's what happens. But, you know, do you want the audience to assume that the dragon knows this? Totally fine. Totally fine. And you go back potentially to what I said here. You can bite this and pull it out because in its desperation, you know, and push the emotion, I still, I know they're dead, but I don't want to help them and I want to try to to uh, take the pain away. Maybe I want to pull that arrow out. 
and that pulls the creature over, then it's closer. Then you do the last nuzzling, head down, eyes closed, because it's the last tender moments. Then arrow, so it's big contrast of not a lot of movement, and the big bam, but not this, but it's more straight into this. Like what's going on? And that's just a creature reaction of the muscle spasm and the nerves and the pain. Um, you know, that's what, so that's why the arm goes up. And then, because of that look, because I like this, that if he or she would look that the actual arrow would be here in its eye line. And then he follows the eye line down to, wait, this is what pains me, and so on and so on. I'm repeating myself, but again, I'm a fan of a couple things, and again, uh, I think this is going to be all up to you how you want to proceed. Um, and that's about it. All right, cool shot. I'm very curious which um, direction you're going to go, and... That's it. I'm sorry. I'm looking at your very last note. I keep saying that's it, but I want to make sure I don't, I don't miss anything. Um, because you are mentioning, I need to move his family back closer to him. I mean, we talked about that. The initial, the initial timing of the error is confusing. We did talk about that. Cut the beats. It depends. Maybe I should turn down his pain reaction. It's clear that it's just a surface wound. Yes. Him discovering error is confusing. Depends. Not really. So after he's done with his scan for danger, we'll try to search... And he turns aggressively towards the wound and maybe goes for removing the arrow with his mouth. That could be cool, actually, but that might take too much time. I think at this point, there is there's kind of an attack revenge, being careful where is the attacker mode, where if this is just a surface wound, I don't think the dragon will care as much. It's not something that's going to um, debilitate him or her enough. So I, uh, I don't know. To me, taking the arrow out kind of slows down the pacing. I think at this point, you want to ramp up, ramp up, ramp up into this. Then taking the time to pull out the arrow. Personally, uh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, but again, it's all very subjective. Should tweak his mechanics some more during the walk and run bit? Yes, and again, depends how far you want to go in terms of human and creature. Um, and that's it. All right, I hope I address all... The notes, and I'm actually a big fan of getting notes from other professionals. I like this. I like how, because it gives you an option to compare. Because I would hate for you to do exactly what I say. You should not follow everything I say. Because it's just one opinion. It's one subjective opinion. And I'm a big fan of hearing what other professionals think. Because, you know, this could be different. This could be much better. This could be totally wrong. And again, wrong in a subjective way. Um, but it's cool. They always like learning from other people in terms of their approaches. It's very cool. So big fan um, and very curious which way you're going to go. So thank you. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.